Alex, you need to go shopping now. I want to celebrate and have some fun tonight. I want to show you how to lavish things in life. Hey, morning, ChatGBT. Um, what ideas do you have for me? Good morning. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Here are some ideas for activities and materials you can pick up at the store to support them. It's me like the movies. Rich people dreaming. Rich people dreaming. Hey everyone, uh, yeah, welcome back. We have just got back from a week without walls. So that is uh, a time where all the lessons shut down, sevens to, to tens, they're off on internship to work experience. Elevens doing mocks and twelves are also a week without walls, no lessons, all sorts of different activities, adventurous activities taking place. But let me introduce myself. It feels like it has been a hot minute since I've properly sat down and done a video for Deep. This year, 2025, I'm making the effort to do a lot more and make a lot more of these videos. So a welcome back to you, a welcome back from this week with me. And uh, hello, thanks for joining for my little ramble there. I had to plan some of those activities. And what I found is over the course of the last couple of months, you know, multimodal, having my phone plugged into the car and being able to chat things through with AI, I found it massively useful. Um, whether it's for me going through writing, because I'm not a great writer, um, I much prefer to be able to talk and then elicit and share ideas in that respect. So back and forward in that way is super, super useful for me. Um, and getting a lot more out of it, whether it's through GPTs, whether it's conversations, whether it's helping me plan and ideate certain things, have a go at it. I think it will be a massive, uh, use the AI word now, it's almost ingrained, I think the word change, it's gonna be a real game changer. It's like, uh, that word has been like indoctrinated into most people's vocabulary if they use AI, if they've read enough AI content, you know, it's a real game changer, guys. We need some other words, we need some new words from game changer. It will change your, well, it's not really gonna change your life, um, but I found it hugely useful to have that capacity um, to be able to create and ideate and get ideas. And I'm using it a lot more AI generally now, and this is what I wanna talk about in this video, is about how we can utilize it um, with curriculum design. And that's really what I wanna talk about today and showcase for you, is how you can utilize the projects on ChatGPT, which is currently what I do, uh, and the research capabilities to help develop your curriculum for 2025. I'm gonna share with you some of the things that I've been lucky to speak with people about on the upcoming podcast episodes for this year and how I then go about researching and pulling those things down and embedding them into a project and utilizing them for designing my curriculum. And I'm gonna share with you just some of the lessons that have been able to design with this and hopefully you're gonna have something that you can take away by the end of it and start to implement straight away into your curriculum design. So. Let's get into it. Um, in a very Blue Peter-esque moment, which is an age and an English joke about a TV program, you Google it anyway. Um, here is one I kind of made earlier, but I'm gonna take you through an example. So for this, um, I'm gonna take you through uh, an example of what I'm working on at the moment. I'm gonna use this week. So recently I interviewed a gentleman named the name of Ed Kerwin. Go look him up, doing amazing things with Empathy, so Empathy Studios, and also has Empathy Week, which will be out in March. And we have a podcast episode, self-promoting plug here, uh, coming out by the end of February to promote this. But I want to see beforehand if I can start to build in elements of empathy and tasks into my subjects, into my lessons. In other words, I'm going to show you how I go about building it into my curriculum. And, and the first thing I do is it starts with research. So I use perplexity to do a lot of my research. Um, as you can see, I've already asked it, what are the different components of empathy? And it's giving me the information, giving me the sources, which are really, really good. Um, and as you can see from there, I have these components. Um, and then we see what I can then do with this, and I'll show you in a second, is that then I can copy it somewhere else. Now I've also then developed my question further, how can we develop empathy in students in lessons? So it's starting to give me some ideas, it's starting to give me some sort of components of these things, ways and means in which we can do this. And then lastly, obviously, we've got literature, storytelling. One of the big things, again, Empathy Week and Empathy Studios works on is about this idea of using storytelling videos, films for empathy. So great idea. Again, go and look at it. So I've got this information here. And then what I have done with that is I've then taken that information over and have copied it into ChatGPT. 
So as you can see from there, just a simple copy it and it copies in the references, go down and I have all this information there copied in. And what I then ask it to do, go back to the top, is I then asked it from that is your role is to create a framework for educators that gives them the components and attributes of empathy that can be used to develop activities in every subject. So I've gone broadly for every subject rather than specifically for science with this. So I have all this information there and it starts to create this framework um, about the information that I've given it. So I've got core components of empathy, emotional empathy, um, cognitive empathy, and then compassionate empathy. And it starts to get, add in some additional elements of this as well. It comes up with cross-subject applications. So already at the moment, it's giving me, and this is the key thing I like, is options. So I think in years gone by, when we looked at this, it was just very specific, very detailed. But for how I like to use it is I like to be given options to explore and therefore I can pick and choose or I might give students then multiple options for this. Or it allows me to look at it as well interdisciplinary. Um, if you've listened to me talk enough, um, you know how I feel about across cross silos is, is the term or interdisciplinary is really, really important to me. Um, so it's starting to add all this information in. Um, and then I've obviously added another component to it then about storytelling and literacy, literacy and storytelling and that, or sorry, in, in canvas mode there, which is quite nice. As you can see, it's still using that, um, but it means I can edit it and it can then obviously keep the components it starts to edit. So what I basically tweaked around with here is I asked it to create um, a knowledge base so that's why I say create a knowledge base from this that I can use in a GPT to help me design curriculum that builds in empathy activities for any subject. Because what I'm going to do, and this is how I've started to add in these components to my curriculum, I'm just showing this one, is I'm going to copy and paste this information into a Google Doc. And that's what you can see now on the screen in front of you. So I've got this knowledge base here. And then what I do is I will just take that I will go to file, I will go to download, I download it as a PDF. So I've got that there. And then back into GPT, back over to ChatGPT. Um, and what I showed you earlier was that I have, obviously within these projects, I've started something called a curriculum builder. And as you saw previously, within my curriculum builder, um, I've got obviously all these different project files. And obviously when you ask it to do something, it will draw from that information. Obviously, you can add instructions and tailor the way it responds. I've not got to that point yet. I generally just like to give it my instructions within the chat and go from there. But what I've started to do is keep all my schemes of work within there. And I've done some research there as well, which you can see. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my new file. So I'm going to add in the empathy file that I've downloaded, which will start to come in. So now I've got all these different things within it as well, as well as then obviously my, my curriculum framework that I could go back and have a look at. Um, and I'm just gonna say to it, let's just give you an example from here as well, um, is what have we got, periodic table. Now, the way I would do this is I would give it the, the scheme of work to start with uh, and maybe any textbook, let's say page grabs, uh, screen grab, screenshots of the relevant information and obviously with the learning outcomes and, and all this information, it, will, it would basically then build the curriculum with the components that I want it to. But for this, we're gonna just ask it to design specifically empathy tasks. Um, so we're gonna go back to our rock scheme of work, which is what we saw beginning. And we're gonna go for the rock cycle. So I'm gonna ask it to design, uh, a design, an activity for the lesson on rock cycles that focuses on empathy. And I'll just say refer, just to make sure, refer to the project files for guidance. Let's see what it can come up with from there. So you saw very briefly searching then the project files and it's coming up now with exploring empathy in the rock cycle. So this is the first time I've seen it. So it's the first time you're seeing it as well. So let's see what this looks like. Empathy by imagining the journey of a rock. Uh, so let's see, let's see if we can list out five alternatives. So again, reason why I like things like this is because it gives me options. Um, and it's something that I know is important to 
implement and integrate into my curriculum. And you may look at this going, oh, so much time you're giving over in terms of you could have just planned the lesson, it'd be a lot quicker. But actually by having this is a curriculum to me is an evolving piece. And so you do it for the one year and you might go back and tweak it and tweak it, you know, so on and so forth and add things in. But you've got to invest the time to get it right to start with. And that means also thinking about the components that go into it. So for me, you've got learning outcomes. Yes, there's a big picture. Yes, obviously. But then into there, it's the types of activities that foster and develop skills as well as the learning and understanding that needs to take place. So I'm happy to invest the time and to try and get these different activities in there, not for every lesson, but giving students then opportunities to develop uh, and develop those skills with them realizing and sometimes without them realizing. So that was just a very quick example and hopefully something you can take that you might be interested in that you think is important to go into a curriculum. So for me, see I've just shown you an example of empathy. I'm also looking at social and emotional learning. Uh, I'm looking at the six C's, UAE values, we know here is important. And I have been building and developing my own AI literacy framework. You would have seen components of it there. Um, and I will be sharing that in the near future after some presentations, after I've gone through it and uh, checked it out. But um, have a go with it. It's amazing in terms of what you can find just with a little bit of research, copy and pasting in. And I prefer it in projects because it means then I can keep in place all my schemes of work rather than having it as a GPT, which I'm sure would still work, but can be quite difficult then to find and go back to and have that continued conversation. So hopefully um, you've been inspired to go and try this and see how you can develop your curriculums using this research to give students further opportunities uh, and different activities that maybe if it were you just thinking on your own, you wouldn't do normally. Anyway, if you have got this far through the video, thank you ever so much for watching. Um, do consider hitting that subscribe button for me, but definitely hit the like button. If you have enjoyed this, I will be providing and doing a lot more videos this year. So stick with us. Hopefully there's a lot more learning to come from that. But for now, thanks ever so much. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.